What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Another episode with Merc. Uh, today, I am going to be showing you how to make a chatbot using Llama Index and using Langchain agents that you can integrate into Llama Index. And I ripped some of the logic just from there's a tutorial on the documentation. So I'm not going to act like I got to this point all on my own. I did what everyone should do read the documentation and I found this beauty um, and it just really helped me understand a lot of things like how to maybe make more complex projects now that I know how to make sub indices and you know like query them and route stuff so uh, just to shout them out real quick uh, y'all are real ones um, but I did add some custom logic to it or or at least like tweaked it a bit for what I wanted um, but anyways uh, so as you probably could have told uh, from the Streamlit interface, we've got Jim AI. So this is going to be, this is kind of like a project that I'm starting to have an idea about. Um, the context behind this is like, I'm into fitness, my brother's into fitness, and we think that, or, you know, I, I think there's a, there's a lot of misinformation in the fitness industry. Like when I started, uh, there's just Reddit posts and forums, and you can go to the research papers, and there's all this stuff, and there's all these different people trying to tell you different things. And I think it'd be interesting to have a chat like interface where you can have more digestible information from like vetted sources, such as PubMed, which Llama Hub has already. So I was like, okay, let's try this because it's probably going to be relatively simple to get up a MVP. So that's what I did. So I just want to show you where you can find the PubMed. Uh, Element OP, come on. There it is. Yeah, so it's right here. Um, you can check this out at llamahub.ai. I will put it in the description as well. I always do, just in case you're new to the channel. Welcome. Um, but basically, you know, we just import download loader. We're gonna be getting the PubMed reader and we're having we have a search query here. So this is uh where I just put in fitness supplements for now. I still kind of figuring out how I would want to like, like, let's say a user, you know, asks a question in the chatbot and I don't have this readily available. Like we'd have to first check and then we'd have to say, oh, it doesn't know. So maybe we should try to load more documents into our vector database using keywords from a search term that they put because then it kind of automatically updates our uh, vector database. But gotta be careful because you don't want to like have people be spamming you. Um, but anyways, so that's what we're going to be using, and I will walk you through step by step, uh, just as ChatGPT tells us to uh, how I did this. So here I will first show you we there is a button that says load at the bottom, and this is going to call load papers from PubMed. Uh, so here. I am. I already have my uh, PubMed reader declared uh, globally up top, um, and down here I have the search query fitness supplements. I'm just re restarting my Streamlit interface, and I will reload this. And we're just gonna hit load. We're going to see what happens. And boom. It is. It is loading the PubMed documents. Now that we've done that and you've seen how the loader works, it's right here. We have our, our prompt helper. Again, this is literally just to kind of abstract away all of the headache of chunking up uh, tokens for you. So just set the num output to 256 and make the max input size. Uh, however long your token window is for whatever LLM you're using. Um, so we construct that in a prompt helper. Service context is our like canonical object that you pass into uh, like a, a vector index or any type of index, I think. To my, as far as my knowledge goes, it's just kind of like a group of settings that you usually want to pass in so 
just calling from defaults, uh, I think it just loads up everything and then you just add what you want. Uh, so I have my LLM predictor and my prompt helper, of course. And then we are creating our GPT simple vector index from the documents and we're adding the service context. And then we're saving it to disk. And that's why you saw it said saved when, I, when, when it saved. <clears throat> and now to the fun stuff. Uh, we just restarted it and we have this function right here called initialize chatbot and that calls setup llama chatbot agent because we are using llama indexes uh, llama toolkit to use langchain agents now let's take a look at what this function does uh yep and i also just want to call out uh chat chain this is uh what i'm calling so i had it as a global variable because i'm setting the uh the langchain agent inside of one of these functions um probably a better way to do it but again just did this today so i wanted to show you guys what i have so here we go we have setup llama chatbot agent we have conversation memory buffer memory imported from uh the langchain module and also from uh we have chat open ai imported from langchain as you can see up here just want to show you And then we are getting our toolkit from another function I created um, called define toolkit. Now up here, we're passing in an array of indexes. We're not actually because I only have one uh, uh, GPT simple vector index, but the reason I'm doing this is because I wanted to kind of make it more of like more extensible. So like if I have, if I decide, you know, I want to load documents from another uh, data source that also has papers on fitness supplements and stuff like that. I can just simply load this into what we're going to be doing, like into our composable graph, which we are about to talk about right now. Now's a better time than any. So here we are getting summaries. I would probably have better summaries than this as well. Uh, this is just something for the agent to kind of see like, oh, PubMed index, so this would be PubMed index one. Uh, and then we have our LLM predictor with OpenAI. We create our service context. And now here's where the magic happens. This is uh, where we're gonna start making our graph. So this composable graph, um, as far as I can tell from reading the documentation, it just lets you kind of just collect a bunch of sub indices and just query over all of them. So we what, what this is doing is we're saying, we wanna take all the uh, vector indexes we have and we want to put them, load them put them into a uh, GPT list index. And this is actually what the tutorial tells us to do as well. This is where I got it from, uh, right here. To address this, right here, it says we have access to four documents. So if we had more documents and more like other indices, then say we compose a graph, which consists of a list index defined over four vector indices. <clears throat> so once we do that, we save it to disk and then we are getting our decompose transform. Um, so a what this does in my, my my best guess, and somebody please correct me, but this is from my understanding, uh, the way they work, and I, actually it might just be cool to go to it. Um, where is it? Query, query transformations. Yes, so the single step query. So this is what it does. So let's say you have this uh, this this main query. It's going to decompose it into two different ones and kind of route them to the most relevant documents and then combine them at the end. Um, so if we had a you know you can imagine you know someone's asking some pretty complex questions about a certain type of supplement like hey I am I'm 18 years old like I'm 18 or like I'm 21 and uh, you know I have X Y Z. Uh, issues and I'm taking this supplement um, like X times a day, like, is that okay? There's a lot packed into there. So uh, we probably want to have some sort of query uh, decomposer uh, to just kind of route the kind of like the subtasks of like, what else we need to find out? Like, okay, first let's find out like, what's the right, like we need to find out how many times should you take this a day? Is this okay for children? Like, is this okay for this age? And then like bring it all together and then 
form a final answer based on all the information you've gathered. So once we have our uh, our transform, our, our query transform as well, we are going to have our query configs. So this is basically saying, so we have like an array and the top one here, the simple dict is a, the, that is the struct index struct type of the GPT simple vector indices that we have. And then on top of that, what they're all inside is a list index. So that is just, in case you're wondering what all this means, that is what it means. I do, I will be honest, I do want to kind of take more of a deep dive into the query configs and all of the different uh, things you can pass in here um, because it is, you know, that this is something that is relatively new to me. Um, but hey, it works. Uh, we know it works in practice, but not in theory. Uh, um, but we will soon. Uh, then we are going to create, oh yes, I almost forgot. Once you save it to the disk, we are then loading it back up and with the service context, which has our LLM predictor. So that, that is important uh, to know. Um, but yeah, okay. But yeah, now we are continuing on and we're making our graph config of, with the graph tool config, which we import from the llama index agents helpers. So yes, to make your llama toolkit, you need to make your graph config and your index config. So as far as I can tell, you do need index configs and you do need a graph config. Like you need a graph config to, uh, like for this llama toolkit to work and have like some sort of agent or else I was running into some issues. Um, and so right here, you can see we're saying useful for when you want to answer queries about supplement research. Now, this is kind of, again, part of the cool part about, you know, working with LLMs is they can kind of interpret natural language. So it's like when the agent is thinking, oh, should I be using this tool? Well, the description is going to help it determine whether or not it should use the tool. So I actually did have fun kind of playing around with the description because it does kind of make a difference, um, which is, again, super cool. And now here is where, again, we only have one index, but if we, hypothetically, if we had more, we would create a tool config for each one and append them to an index configs uh, array. And same sort of concept as the graph config, we need a description, uh, we need the, you know, the index instead of the graph this time because it's the index tool config and the name. Um, and then we get our toolkit. So llama toolkit is constructed with index configs and array of index configs and an array of graph configs. And since we, since we only have one, we're just popping that sucker into a list and we're returning the toolkit. And now we are back to this step. We are finally able to create the llama chat agent. So it takes the toolkit, the memory, and I'm setting it to verbose so we can see what it's thinking. And then again, this is where I'm setting the chat chain that I declared up top globally. I'm just saying global chat chain. Uh, so it notes, so this function knows I'm talking about the global variable and then I'm setting it to this. So then I can call it for the entire session in my chat function. Um, this actually is no longer necessary at this moment. I'm still playing around with that, so we don't even need that. And now we are ready to basically ask it questions. Okay. Hello there. What can you tell me from the PubMed studies? Because I have no idea what it's going to be able to tell me about. So it says, do I need a tool? Yes, I need PubMed index v3. There we go. The results of the study show that the physical activity was positively associated with lipid amino acids and zimet xenometabolite, xenometabolite pattern. <laughs> Specifically in the plasma samples of males, 25 of the top loading metabolites in the metabolite pattern associated with physical activity were from lipid metabolism super pathway. Okay. What 
What is this? Doesn't even need a tool for that. You can just explain it to me. Um, well, that's awesome. Um, so yeah, this is, again, super early. Uh, I just made this today. And I do have plans to kind of keep working on this. I want to make this like a kind of a platform where people could come and just ask questions about fitness advice. Uh, and hopefully it's a bit more conversational than this. By then, maybe you could have settings like Chad. Chad GPT is like, sub bro? Like, uh, maybe. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my, my goal. Cause again, uh, there's a lot of misinformation in the fitness industry. Uh, people are like larger fitness creators, not all of them, but some of them tend to push supplements that may not be the best or as efficacious, uh, just because it gives them the bigger paycheck and you have, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that are, you know, just too stupid to just take them for their word. Um, and I mean that in a nice way. I'm not saying that in like a mean way, uh, hopefully. And yeah, we'll just see where it goes from there. But uh, yeah, it's probably gonna be called Ask Jim or Jim AI because there's a meme called We Go Jim, like We Go Jim. Um, if you're not familiar with that, now you know, check it out. Uh, look it up on YouTube, it's uh, super funny. Super funny stuff. But yeah, this is just a little bit uh, a little bit more of a window into my life and like something I'm working on. Um, yeah, I, cause I, I like fitness and I like AI. So I hope you guys liked it and there's no, there's no outro to this. Drop a comment. Hate comments are appreciated because I love all the engagement. Um, and yeah, subscribe. And yeah, if you have any recommendations for something I should do next, let me know. Peace.